Running electrical wire outside above ground can be tricky, but it is not impossible. In fact, it is one of the easiest ways to add electrical power to a detached building or pole-mounted lantern. The first step is to determine the distance to be covered, the maximum load, and the type of conductor needed. Then, you can calculate the voltage drop. Depending on the size and type of the conductor, you may need to decide how large of a conduit to use, the fill restriction, and overhead support. The pound fitting should be insulated with quality caulking compound. The nipple should be secured to the junction box. A plastic bushing should be placed over the connector. Next, pull the cable through the conduit. Connect the cable to any receptacles or switches. Once the wire is inside the conduit, you can install the downspout and pound fitting. Once this is finished, you can install the electrical box and receptacles. Regardless of the location of the electrical wire, the National Electrical Code provides many specific requirements for outdoor circuits and equipment. The primary concerns with outdoor wiring are shielding against moisture, preventing physical damage and managing issues related to underground burial. Generally, residential outdoor wiring projects involve outdoor receptacles and running the wire outside above ground. Listed equipment is also required for outdoor wiring, which is a safer option. When installing an electrical wiring outside above ground, be sure to install conduits in appropriate places. This will protect the wiring from any outside elements and allow for a more flexible design. In general, you can use both rigid and flexible conduit for this purpose. Make sure to earth the wires if they're in open areas or prone to weather conditions. But be aware that this method is not recommended for outdoor applications. There are two types of conduits for electrical wires. The first type is low temperature wiring, which uses a metal casing and is rated for 250-440 volts. It is also not as durable as high temperature wiring, but it does not pose a risk of fire and is a cheap alternative. The second type is high temperature wiring. It is more durable and will not cause electrical shock. The second type of conduits for insulated wires is TRS. These are circular oval cables that are protected from water, steam, and chemicals. While they are flexible, they are not suitable for outdoor locations. They are exposed to high humidity and are susceptible to corrosion. To prevent damage, wooden cable wiring should be protected from harsh elements and should be protected from high humidity. The tin copper is also better for indoor use. Before installing outdoor electrical conduit, consider the following factors. You can use a Schedule 40 PVC conduit for your outdoor application. This type is waterproof, but you may want to consider the type of wire used for the underground version. Usually, a 24-inch underground feeder cable is installed 18 inches underground. The size of the trench should be a little bigger than the diameter of the wire. You will need to measure the depth of the trench and mark where the wires will run. Before you install the electrical wiring for an outdoor shed, you should consider the location of the outlet box. It will be located in the soffit. To connect the two wires, you will need to attach the box to the soffit using GI clamps. To connect the two wires, you need to run the conduit from the soffit to the trench. After that, you should install the outdoor outlet. The material used for the wire is important. UF conduit is best for a home that is near the electric meter. A conduit should be at least 18 inches below the level of the ground. For an outdoor wiring project, you should check with local authorities to find out which type of conduit is allowed. The best way to run an electrical wire is above or below ground. If the area is covered, you can install an extension or new wall to avoid having to dig up the existing wall.